I hope this isn't a bad time. I just thought maybe I would take David up on his offer about spending a little extra time with my family. I mean, if that's, you know, still on the table. Of course it is. Why don't you take Amanda and Trevor and, you know, could take a walk in the park. It's a beautiful evening. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'd like to stay here. Maybe you could take the walk in the park. I have to get back to the hospital anyway. I love you, son. I do, I do. Hey, you be good for your mother, okay? I'll be back soon. You know, maybe when I come home, I can change another diaper. <laughs> Hey, was that a tooth I saw before? And I noticed that you started shaving. That took me by surprise. I gotta tell you something, mijo. These telenovelas, they're not the same without you. When you get all excited and you chew on your fist of the good parts, I miss that. That was, that was golden. That's what that was. He's definitely missed you, too. Really? Do you miss me, ever? Jake, of course I do. Why are you really here? Because I'm an idiot. I mean, before. I mean, I, let's try and say I was an idiot before. Look, it's just that it was killing me seeing you with David. And then it's you and David and the baby, like a little family. And it's me on the outside looking in at the family that's supposed to be my family. Listen, I get that you're angry. I just don't understand why you're so mad at me. I was trying to make it better for all of us. I got time for us together. I thought you'd be happy. But you walked away. You wouldn't take my phone calls. It's because I felt like you were getting drawn in. And you're always on his side and... Listen, I'm in an impossible situation. A situation that I, I, I created, so I made it happen. No, listen, it, it doesn't matter how we got here. I, I was just trying to make it better for all of us. It didn't trust me. I should have... I should have trusted you and I should have listened and I just hope it's not too late. Funny thing is when I was coming over here I had rehearsed this and it was going to be perfect at least I thought it was going to be perfect. Then I stopped myself and I had one of those um, in-depth hindsight analysis things that I do and I realized telling you that I was sorry that you know I should apologize it didn't seem like it was right really because I really just need you to understand that it drives me crazy when I see you sharing these little moments with David. It sends me to a place that I don't want to go, that I don't want to be, that I'm sorry that I went in the first place, and I just, I just needed to explain that to you, okay? No. No more apologies, no more explanations, Jake. All that talk about love and together forever was it just talk I never in my life want to see you get hurt and I certainly didn't ever want to be the reason why you would have any pain never So if you meant what you said when you came to the hospital about another chance for this, then I will fight with you, for you, for us, us. Because it's uh, his favorite color, I'm pretty sure. Thank you. Look, I, if this is um, too uncomfortable, I can leave. It's okay. I just... I just want to know how this could ever work. I mean, you, you say that you won't let David get to you, but as soon as he walks into the door... Well, I... I think the way to deal with David is just to let him 
be who he is. Let David be David. Really? You could really do that? Well, the thing about him is that he is basically his own worst enemy. I've been thinking about this. Because he loves to be in control, right? And the minute he would lose control, he would crash and burn. David is in control. Yeah, but if we're really in love, he can't control that. And that would eventually eat him up alive. I mean, eventually a person would have to implode, and that would mean a happy ending for us, because all we're doing is just living our lives and being true to who we are. So, no plan? No, you know, planning or scheming or maneuvering or manipulating. None of that. Because if, if, if we have love, then I personally think that is the strongest weapon in the world. If we have that, if we have trust, then not, nothing he can do. Actually, we're actually further along than you realize it. We're, we're down the road of the dreams that we had every single night about being together. Those nights when I put the olive oil on your stomach so you didn't have stretch marks, remember? Because you didn't want those. So that's it. It's, uh, it's everything. It's all I got. And uh, I just, you know, hope it's not too late. And I hope that when you came to the hospital, you meant what you said about us, th this, you know, having another second chance together. And so it's not awkward. I can just, you know, see my yourself out. So I'm not like. <laughs> What's it like alone at night with him? I bet that he sits at a roaring fire, brooding under his unibrow. <laughs> <sighs> I really, I guess I gotta go. No, not yet. Well, I think so, because David's bound to show up any second and and don't get me wrong, I wouldn't mind if he walked in on the two of us, but no, let me take that back. I, I wouldn't want to share any part of you with him, not even an inch, or anyone. We're going to be OK, aren't we? Yeah, we're good. We're going to be OK, I think, because we're on beatable or unshakable. Uh, don't stop. That was, that was great. That's moving. It was uh, deep. It was brooding, even, kind of. You know what? just want to thank you for your hospitality. Appreciate it. And uh, it's one hell of a steam room you got there, pal.